Marble Creek, not for the faint of heart. I don't know if that was the the norm for the ICT. Marble Creek, that's what I went over. And it was just, it was, it was so brutal. There was no trail overcome with brush, but like we're talking thick brush where it's just over your head and you're engulfed. You had to cross the river probably, probably 20 times. There were some times when you had to, when it was easier to go upstream because the river was, it was getting shallow. So it was easier to go upstream than it was to go on the trail. I fell in the river as well, which was so dumb. My shoes are completely destroyed. You just had to climb over rocks and like just steep stuff sometimes to get around. Yeah, like it was intense. I'm glad it's over. And I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I'm hoping it's not like that. But you just, you never know with this trail, I feel like. Anything can happen. <laughs> Anything. The Frank was proving itself to be one of the more challenging trails that I had ever been on. I took an extra rest day, so Matt went ahead with two other hikers that we met on the trail, and I was left solo. I was surprised to have decent trail the whole way to Lookout Junction. There I saw the Forest Service trail sign lying on its side. Yet another omen of the ruggedness that was the Frank Church. At that moment, my satellite device rang. I received a text from Matt, telling me to run and meet up with him and the others to cross Big Creek. The situation right now is that I'm meeting up with Matt and the rest of them, Joel, Carmen. I guess they were saying that there's tons of bushwhacking. Matt told me to run to him, meet up with him. Uh, he's just over four miles away. I guess they found maybe a possible way to, to ford the river. We all crossed Big Creek together, but honestly, it was too gnarly to capture. So unfortunately, I didn't get the footage. But now, I was hiking with Joel and Matt. You guys have morale fever. There's morales everywhere. Morales are an edible mushroom. Uh, they look like this, they kind of look like brains. They only come out in the spring after a rainstorm, and they're actually quite delicious. And we've been finding, I mean, pounds of morels. These guys were crazy about morels. I unfortunately never tried them. I had no time to cook them at night. I was too busy sewing up my shoes until 1 a.m. with a paracord that I found on the trail. But eventually, I did fall asleep. The next day we got up to a snowstorm. It was June, but Mother Nature just didn't care. We were 30 miles away from our next resupply at Campbell's Ferry. Our resupplies were airdropped at Campbell's Ferry using Arnold Aviation. The homesteaders in the Frank Church backcountry have been relying on Arnold Aviation for years for their groceries and mail. I don't think you can really see the beauty from the camera, but you can just see down there the salmon. We still had a long way to go, but getting out of the snow was encouraging, and we knew we were fairly close to Campbell's Ferry. We're probably just about a mile away. My feet are so tired. Yeah, I'm super tired. Been on the feet all day. All day. We're in Campbell's Ferry right now, and the caretakers are Doug and Phyllis you know, hiked in the snow for 29 miles and then we finally landed at Campbell's Ferry and here we are. I actually have an emergency situation. My shoes are almost completely destroyed. I found rope on the trail so that I could sew the shoe together a little bit more, but I'm thinking about the next 130 miles and really it was stressing me out and I don't think they're gonna last. So Doug the, said there was a pilot coming in t today and so through my satellite device, I was able to have Michelle get some shoes and some other like dry bags, because everything's getting wet, to bring here with the pilot today. So I'm hoping that happens. And the Frank has just been 
it's it's awesome. It's like a gorgeous place, I and mean, you can see it around me. It's just, it's such a beautiful place, but also it's ruthless. Like this place doesn't, it it doesn't light up. Like it will rain constantly. Um, it, it like the conditions will be muddy, and so you're just walking in mud or something. Trees are falling. Like it's it's a pretty wild place. We have 30 more miles, and then we go to the Selway. Who knows what we're gonna face. Just every day is a new challenge. The ICT always puts a twist on your plans. Doug and Phyllis Timms let me use their Wi-Fi to call Michelle. And to sum up the conversation, let's just say Michelle was in a lot of tears. Michelle confirmed with me that everything was okay and to stay out there and finish the trail. But inside I was worried and a little distraught. The next morning, Doug Timms came up to me. And he told me that there was one more seat available on the plane and I could fly home see Michelle, and then take the next flight Wednesday morning to go back to Campbell's Ferry and finish the hike. If you are watching this, Doug and Phyllis, I am very grateful for you. Thank you. I surprised Michelle and spent the following two days resting in the call with my wife. On Wednesday morning, I had a flight scheduled to go back to Campbell's Ferry to continue the ICT. Like I said, the ICT always puts a twist on your plans, but that is what makes it so great. on the next episode of the Idaho Centennial Trail.